All right, uh, good morning, everybody. So today uh, I got to do some spraying. I got about uh, 20 acres, uh, 15 acres maybe, down here at a new uh, property that uh, the uh, owners are letting us do the hay uh, just to kind of take care of it. And also, you know, uh, for them, they got a couple little animals, so they just want a little bit of hay. Um, you know, 100 bales of hay a year for their stuff. I get my shoes on here. So I got the uh, went through the sprayer last night and did a little bit of work on it. Had to change out the T valve and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, I just had some gauge and stuff wasn't working, all that good stuff. So went through that last night. So got everything. It's almost dark. Last time we got everything done. So uh, we got that guy all ready to go. So uh, I got to let the chickens out here and the turkeys. Let's let the turkeys out right now. So oh, getting out a little bit later than I'd like. I only got two little kids, uh, you know. My wife uh, trying to help her out in the morning, and so let's see these guys. They're on the move. Looks like they're gonna need a little, a little water. All right. I don't want to leave my tea behind. So I'll show you guys what I got for a spray rig here. Um, since some of my properties I don't have water, so uh, I use these containers here to hold fresh water to mix with my spray and I got a little 12 volt pump that I can hook up to the front uh, my battery here on the Massey Ferguson and uh, here's my sprayer here I believe this has got about uh, it might be 25 feet 25 foot boom on that guy there so I uh, bought this down at White's I had to do a lot of work to it I had to, pretty much it's all rebuilt I had to put a new uh, new PTO pump down there a coupler just put this T-valve on, new gauge yesterday, new valve here for the spray wand. Uh, yeah, I just went completely through it, so I've used it a couple times, but uh, hopefully this will be the best. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's worked pretty well the last couple times, but just a couple things I wanted to tweak on it. So, we'll go get the, uh, the Jersey Giants out, out here. So, and I may be... Uh, Pretty, pretty certain I'm going to be upgrading my tractor here. Uh, so my dad has a, a Branson tractor, a 7845C. It's like 78 horsepower cab on it, uh, you know, a little bit bigger tractor. Uh, so he's moving back up to Indiana to, to take care of my grandmother. So he's kind of downsizing. So I'm actually going to, we're going to, I'm going to trade him my, uh, my Massey 1835M. Then he's gonna basically take over the payment on that, and I'm gonna take over the payment on his, which his is double than what mine is, but it's you know twice the tractor, and I got a cab, and that'd uh, be better, a little bit nicer up here in the summer when I'm doing hay, and uh, you know, and in the winter times so have some heat in there. And plus my uh, my youngest uh, Lucas, who's a year and a half almost, um, he's one he he'd ride around on the tractor all day, so. Uh, you know, it'd be nice to have, I can put him a little seat in there and, you know, he can go with me for a couple hours or whatever, so. But, uh, so I'll go ahead and uh, feed these other little guys up here. And uh, once I do that, we'll uh, get into getting this sprayer filled up and get ready to take her down the road here. And, and as I said, I got some briars and uh, thistle and some other stuff down there at that property. And like I said, this, this hay, I've been having trouble selling it because of that. So uh, most likely I'm going to take that stuff down at the hay auction just to get rid of it. So I'm hoping for my second cutting, which we've had a lot of rain here. Uh, you know, I want to have a good second cutting down there that I can, you know, recoup some of my money on with all this. So, so uh, I'm going to feed these other guys and uh, we'll get into getting this sprayer set up here. All right, so I got the, uh, what's left of the meat birds out. Um, we didn't do a video on it, but we did uh, butcher about half of them here last week. Uh, I got some some that are a little bit smaller, the Red Rangers and all that. Decided to let them go probably for another two weeks, and we'll finish them off. So I'll probably do a video, I mean, of that process then. 
as well. But um, anyways, got the uh, sprayer down here in the tractor, filling this up with uh, fresh water. Uh, this is 65 gallons here, um, but before I get too carried away here, I'm gonna fire this up and test to make sure everything's working right since I did do some work on it because it's, that's the worst thing in the world is going down, you know, down to you know, three miles down the road and something not working right and you don't have anything with you. So again, uh, I got, like I said, these are 275 gallon containers. I got pretty reasonable. I think I paid like 75 bucks a piece. So I got three of these actually for, for various objects around the farm here. So or projects, I should say. And uh, so it's nice for, I put about hundred gallons of water in this and I got plenty of water when I get down the road and got a little pump in which I'll show you guys that process when we get into it. But anyways, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and fire the tractor up here and we'll uh, make sure this sprayer is working all right. So. <clears throat> yeah, I'll go ahead and turn the PTO on. Alrighty. I'll help if I put the uh, uh, this tractor here has this. You turn the PTO off manually down here. There we go. So yeah, it's turning down here now. Turn the water on. There we go. Now wait. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. was a little too much pressure. <laughs> and went all the way around. <laughs> now I uh, said so I just replaced this uh, pressure valve and all that here. So they must not have it set right, because that gauge, when it started up, it went all the way, all the way around to like 100, <laughs> so. There we go. Put this around to the center here and make sure everything's spraying. Yeah, so everything's working there. I'm gonna put it on all three, but it's gonna kind of make a mess here. So everything's working, <laughs> looks like, so. But I've actually got this on bypass right now to where to actually agitate and uh, mix whatever you got in there, so. But I haven't put any chemicals in yet, so, you know, when I was spraying around, this is a clean, I did use tank clean and all that the last time I did clean it, so. But we're looking, everything looks good there. I'm pretty satisfied with that. So we're going to shut this down and uh, we'll get ready to you know, start filling the front tank here and then we'll throw some chemicals in here. So, and, uh, I'll talk about that here in a second. Okay, so I got the camera set up on the other, uh, the other direction here so, so you can show you what I'm doing here. So I'm uh, today, uh, it's hay field, which hay is a grass, uh, you know, timothy, fescue, orchard grass, brome grass, all that good stuff. 
Uh, so we're trying to kill, we got some blackberry uh, briars, brambles, and a lot of thistle on this property that we're trying to eradicate because it's pretty much this hay that I got here. I mean, it's going to be hard for me to even give it away for the most part with briars. And I mean, it's good hay. Uh, it's just, it's just hard to, it's a hard sell with that stuff. I, even though most animals will pick through it and they won't eat, uh, you know, something that's going to hurt them or the bad stuff. So, I mean, the briars, I mean, they're real small though, so it isn't a huge deal. So we're using a uh, selective brush killer here. And this is a, a mixture of 2,4-D ester and uh, decamba acid, which uh, like I said, those are select, they're selective. They only kill, they kill broadly, so they don't kill grasses. So it'll kill, I mean, the, those uh, briars and stuff, they're really hard to kill. So I'm hoping this, this will do the trick. I uh, might have to spray it again after the, uh, after the second cutting. We might have to hit it again. We'll see how it goes or see how it looks after, you know, here in a week or so. Um, so I know, uh, I, I know I said, yeah, 2,4-D. Uh, 2,4-D kind of gets a bad name because uh, it was an, an ingredient in Agent Orange, even though that wasn't the bad thing, I mean, really in it. Um, the problem, I, so I've, I've actually had, uh, you know, landowners I've talked to, and, uh, you know, they'll ask you what, what, what kind of chemicals and stuff you use, and I say, you know, for in corn and um, other grasses, hay, uh, you know, we, we, I, I, I use 2,4-D because it's been around since the 40s, it works, and it's um, pretty, pretty safe for the most part. I mean, I'm sure there's people out here that have probably had uh, bad experiences is like everything. I mean, I'm not a big fan of Roundup. I mean, Roundup is a non-selective herbicide. It kills everything. And um, I, I think it probably promotes weed growth after the fact. And I mean, there's, there's, there's that big lawsuit with that gentleman out there in, um, in California. And um, I mean, different chemicals affect people different. So, I mean, it is, you know, I'm not, not going to get into all that. But like I said, I've had landowners not uh, re, you know, not let me take on their property because I use, because uh, I think it's Agent Orange when that's not the case. I mean, the bad component of Agent Orange was uh, 245T, which uh, was dioxin, which I mean, at the time Monsanto was making it, I think even like DuPont said it was the most toxic chemical, you know, to man basically, um, you know, dioxin, that 245T. So, um, so it's not a, a terror, I mean, it's, it's hazardous, 240 uh, is hazardous to fish. But if you've ever used weed and feed on your yard, that preen weed and feed stuff or any other brand, you've used 2,4-D. It's just in granular form that you spread it on your yard because, like I said, it kills all the broadleafs, the dandelions, and all that stuff, and doesn't hurt the grass. But anyways, uh, get back to the topic here. Uh, so this, I've got 65 gallons roughly here, and uh, these two gallons will, are good for, I think, 32, so 64, so I don't really need to measure these out. So I'm going to dump both of these uh, in, in the tank here, then we'll start this up and agitate this. And uh, it may may have a little bit too much water in here because I wanted to put, I got some liquid fertilizer I'm gonna throw in here as well. So I'm actually gonna drain a little, I didn't account for that two and a half gallons. So I'm gonna drain about two or three gallons out of this so it's not over full. Okay, and um, I always try to wear good rubber gloves when I'm doing this stuff. I mean, never know.
there's two. And then I'll check this water. I don't want to get too much water. Yeah, I just, just want 75 gallons of water in there. I don't want to take more than I have to. So, uh, and then I'm going to throw in, I mean, this is going to be a little diluted here, uh, a liquid fertilizer you can mix with this, uh, with this concoction. This is an 18.34, and that's just to give that, uh, give it a little jump on the hay, the hay as well, the grasses as well. So we're going to throw this in there and mix this in. All right, so uh, now I'll start this up and put this on agitate and let this mix for a while. And then we're going to go down the road here and uh, get this stuff on the ground. So that, take these off. And then um, I will, I'm gonna let this mix when I'm going down the road, cause it's about a 10 minute drive down near the other property. So I'll let that guy mix up as we're driving to you know, get everything good and mixed together. Then, um, yeah, so I got plenty of water up there in the front. I've got uh, some little tools. I keep some little crescent wrench, uh, an eight millimeter, a five sixteenths uh, uh, nut driver as well. And uh, some extra clamps, stuff like that. I always take with me uh, just in case you Got to take something apart or clean out a, a, a spray tip or something like that. So uh, with that, I'll go ahead and uh, get everything thrown in here, and we'll go uh, and see what we can't uh, get done out here. Uh, so the other, thing, the other thing to keep in mind if you're ever doing this, look at your weather forecast. Like I have the premium membership on weatherchannel.com. I think it's like 20 bucks a year or something like that. But I, I like it because it actually gives you a 48-hour hourly uh, forecast, and uh, it gives you the wind uh, predictions for the wind speed. Like today. You don't want to be spraying when it's like over 15 mile an hour winds. And even that, I mean, even over like five mile an hour winds, it kind of stuff blows around. But uh, this morning is a perfect day for spraying because uh, virtually no wind. I think, in, and by the time I get down there, it might be up to one or two mile an hour. So it uh, should be a great morning to get this done. So uh, with that, uh, I'm going to get everything put away here and uh, or suited up and uh, we'll get on the road. All right, guys, so uh, down here spraying, uh, done quite a bit over here. I didn't cut this hay on this side because the weeds were pretty bad. So I hit that first with the more potent stuff, and now I'm almost out, and I got a little bit up here up top to do. But uh, I just got regular 2,4-D aiming for that, which isn't as good, but that's what I got left. So uh, I'm going to mix some more here and uh, go ahead and, and uh, hit that and uh, do some of the tractor footage here for you guys, too. So. Uh, like I said, I got my cube there for water. Um, I got a little pump I'm going to hook up, and I'm going to put about 30 gallons of water into this just to spray this top, and then uh, we'll have this job pretty well. But perfect morning here for doing this job. No wind and somewhat cool, so it's a real good morning.
All right, so I finished up spraying here and kind of got a little treat uh, in the background, if you can see there. That's the uh, Goodyear blimp. Uh, they actually uh, dock down, or they have a hangar down at Suffield, Ohio, which is like five miles from where I'm out here. But uh, let me uh, switch this around. All right, so I made it back home here and I uh, got the sprayer backed up here by the ditch and uh, going to clean, get some fresh water and and uh, rinse that out, uh, drain everything, then put the booms down and run some fresh water through everything and clean everything out and probably put a little tank cleaner in there as well. So so that's that job uh, is done. So we'll see what happens down there. I'll probably, uh, today's Tuesday, uh, I'll probably run down there Friday to do a little bush hogging and stuff around the edges and um, that taller area that I didn't cut for hay, that was pretty weeded up if it's, if there's uh, pretty good signs of, uh, of uh, death over there, I guess you could say. Uh, I'll probably go ahead and hit that bush hog dot as well. So, um, get ready to do, uh, we got to combine some rye and some oats as well. So I got this uh, all crop uh, 66 combine here. Uh, so I got to put uh, bars in it, uh, sewing to rasp bars. So um, I thought I was gonna have to pull this whole cylinder out, but I think I can actually get in there, you know, one by one and and replace them without taking this thing too far apart because uh, like I said, we're probably gonna need this here maybe this week uh, or, or next week, depending on the weather, but it looks uh, pretty good right now as far as, uh, as far as weather goes. It looks pretty good for the rest of the week as, anyways. So, uh, so stay tuned, I'll, I'll do some videos uh, with putting this guy together here and uh, running it. So uh, it looks like I put a top draper in, put those bars in and a couple other small rubber pieces and, and a PTO shaft together. So uh, I'll get this guy running, and uh, like I said, I'll share that with you guys as well. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell for the updates. Uh, like the video and all that good stuff. And um, like I said, on this channel, we're always uh, doing you know, antique equipment, uh, farm stuff. I mean, you never know what we're going to get into. So I mean, always something going on. <laughs> so uh, again, uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. We'll see you next time.